Is that a monster? Liquid death. No, it's what? it's literally sparkling water. <laughs> <laughs> Named liquid death. It's really extra sparkling water, and it was at Grocery Outlet this week. I don't know what Grocery Outlet is. Oh my god, Bridget! <laughs> Wait! Is that like Pacific Northwest Aldi? No. <sighs> Okay, Grocery Outlet It's called is... Grocery Outlet. It has to be Pacific Northwest Aldi. It's a bargain market. Okay, it's an Aldi. <laughs> and it is the place where things that are about to expire go. Mm. And it's cheaper, and it's a treasure hunt, essentially, because they okay. don't have the same thing every week. Okay, so it's different. Okay, okay. And I love it. That's where we go grocery shopping. And that's where you get liquid death. If we get lucky. <laughs> One time they had pistachio milk. That is awful sounding. I, I hate that. You hate <laughs> that? <laughs> Wait, why do you hate that? I don't even know what it would taste like. Is it going to taste like pesto? <laughs> like, no. I don't understand. It's like almond milk, but well, yeah, pistachio. Yeah, but almonds kind of taste like almonds. Like almond, uh, <laughs> almond milk kind of tastes like almonds. Pistachio milk it tastes like pistachios. I know, and doesn't pistachios taste like pesto? No. Isn't it? Pis- no, it's pine nuts. Aren't pine nuts and pistachios the same thing? No. No, that has to be true. Hold no, on. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> what is... New intro. Ingredients. <laughs> Grocery outlet. In pesto. I feel like I had this argument with Chris literally not that long ago. Okay. Are pine nuts really not pistachios? No. Okay, they're different. <laughs> Welcome to Batty Breakdowns, where we hang out, have fun, and play games all the way to the end. Today, we're going to talk about butterfly soup. We'll give you the breakdown from its creation to its critical reception, and then we'll take you on a deep dive into the game as we share our own experiences and opinions while playing it. We will maybe recommend it. I don't know. You should listen (laughs) to find out. And um, who should play it? You should also listen to find out. You're feeling sassy today. (laughs) And what's our personal rating for it? You know, find out at the end. With that, let's play ball. That was a good one. I like that one. (laughs) Okay, so I have description today. I'm going to read what they had on itch.io for the description. Mm -hmm. A visual novel about gay Asian girls playing baseball and falling in love. Features. Harold, they're lesbians. Which I actually looked up the meme to because I I'm, I didn't understand it. I understand it now, um, except not really one of them. Can is you explain by... it to me? Oh, dude. Okay, the Harold they're lesbians is from the movie Carol. Yeah, you remember that movie Carol? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't uh, watch it, but I, I didn't watch it. it either. There was apparently I don't know if it was a tweet or a Tumblr post or some shenanigan because it's like 2015 or whatever else. Yeah. And somebody was like, you know, I went to this matinee of Carol, and I don't know who I expected to be here, but it's a bunch of old people, like a ton of old people. And in the middle, he just hears one of them say, Harold, they're lesbians. (laughs) (laughs) Three to four hours long and memes. And I'll go ahead and read as a part of the description Mm -hmm. just for folks before we dive in. We do have a little bit of a content warning today. Primarily, there are some brief written depictions of parental, emotional, and physical abuse. There are no visuals, though. And there are also instances of ableist slurs. So Mm -hmm. be mentally prepared if that's something that you don't feel comfortable with. We hope we see you next week. And thank you so much for coming on by. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maddie, how it's made. So this game was made by Brianna Lay. I hope I'm saying her name right. And she made one other visual novel before Butterfly Soup called Palm Gets Wi-Fi. It was like a comedy 
like cute little Mm -hmm. thing about a Pomeranian getting Wi-Fi. That's adorable. And it also features a Sheba named Sheeb, and Pom and Sheeb are also featured in Butterfly Soup. So that's cute. I like it. Yes. She also recently released Butterfly Soup 2 in October of last year. I mean, I say recently, but it was October of last year. It's not that recent, but... It's not that far. It's not that far away. Yeah. And she is a game writer for the studio Pixelberry Studios. Hmm. Hmm. That's her day job. And she was inspired to make the game because she wanted to make a game that more represented her life and her experiences growing up. Right. Because she never saw her or her friends represented in media. And even as she was writing Butterfly Soup, she would ask herself if it was realistic to have four Asian women being the main Mm -hmm. characters Mm -hmm. because she never saw that, even though she literally grew up surrounded by Asian people in the Bay Area. Yeah. And all of her friends were Asian growing up. She still was, like, questioning it, and then she kind of made a comment that it really is crazy how much media, like, messes with your mind and, like, yeah. the reality. Yeah. Because um, she literally, like, lived it and still, yeah. She she lived it and mm-hmm. still was like, is this realistic? She was also inspired to write it after watching some sports animes, namely one named Free, which I've not heard of. Did um, she play baseball? No. Not that oh. I could see okay. in the bios that I was reading, in the interviews I was reading, It was literally just inspired by those sports animes that Mm. she enjoyed. And then I also grabbed a quote from her from an interview that I really liked. Every once in a while, I see some backlash from losers calling it an (laughs) SJW game, and it fills me with joy. I enjoy making people I dislike miserable. (laughs) I I just thought that was iconic. (laughs) I love that. What a great intro to like... I know that, what, we're doing this in March, so Mm -hmm. Women's Month or whatever. I don't know if they have a special name for it, but that is such a baller-ass comment. I love it so much. It was made with Renpi. Have you heard of that? It's probably Renpi because it's Python. Oh. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Renpi. It's made with Renpi, (laughs) which is free to use. So if there's people out there who want to make visual novels, it's free to use. And she pretty much used all free stuff. Mm -hmm. So... The other thing that she used for her art was Clip Studio Paint. Paint. Yeah, I know Clip Studio Paint. Okay, I don't know that one. I think it's just a drawing software. Um, A lot of people use that one. A lot of people use, like, Procreate. A lot of people use Illustrator. I think it's just one of the... She also used Adobe Illustrator for Mm. some of the art. And then she edited the sound with Audacity, which is what we use for the podcast. So I thought that was kind of fun. And I also thought it was fun that she posted directly on her website exactly how she made the game with, like, some tips and stuff if people want to make visual novels. Yeah. I was like, that's really cool that she's willing to just share Share. all the things that she did. So I thought that was great. No GDC talk that I was able to find. Mm -hmm. Did you find her Tumblr? Because I did. Yeah. (laughs) I, did I didn't read all Tumblr. of it. I think I read a poster too, but it was pretty old, so I bailed. Yeah. But <laughs> I was just like, "Oh, this is circa Tumblr." Era. Yeah, it is. It's Tumblr era. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's that. Hmm. Yeah, critical yeah. reception. So since the majority, I did we mention that this game is free? No, we didn't. It's free. Yeah, it's free. <laughs> I mean, you can. It's a. It's pay what you. I paid. But yeah, yeah, I paid. Yeah. I. It's like pay what you want, Mm -hmm. which I really love that itch enables that type of model for creators. I saw a lot of comments that actually thanked her for that and said, hey, when I get money, I'm coming back. And thank you so much for making it accessible for me. So that was actually really sweet. Um, A lot of the comments I did just dig around the itch.io reviews that existed there. I, for some, I took ones that were more recent. For others, I went all the way back to the, you know, last page five years ago to to see. So I'll read some of them. I thought there were a lot. They were all really good. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not even going to joke with you. I don't know that I saw one bad review. There was, I think, one that I saw that was kind of mixed, but the kind of mixture still ended in everyone should play this game. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, good. Uh, so it had very positive, like, reviews on the site. Now, I'm sure that's biased towards the people that aren't those crappy people that mm-hmm. Brianna was talking about earlier. I'm sure there are people like that that were totally. like, F this game, but F those people. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, first review. Fuck. This is so good. What the fuck? <laughs> I finished it in one sitting. It's 5 a.m. 
I don't even regret it. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, I got, this one's a little bit of a, a sweeter one. I played this game when it first came out. It was one of the first games I've ever played, and I think it was a really big start to me finding out I was gay. I love this game so much. Just everything about it is beautiful and funny. It's definitely the best visual novel I've ever played, and I'll never get over how wonderful it is. Aww. I know. That's so cute. A lot of similar sentiments like that. A lot of sentiments about, like, representation mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. this being kind of a a, a good opportunity to yeah. see yourself in, yeah. in games, which doesn't really happen very often. No. And then the last one, just kind of funny. I just want to tattoo the entire game on myself. It's awesome. I loved it so much. Everything is such a vibe. <laughs> and That's awesome. And yeah. on her Tumblr, I did actually see that she approves of people getting tattoos <laughs> of her characters. <laughs> That's awesome. I also saw that she approves of fan art, cosplay, as long as you don't do like brown face or yellow face oh. or whatever. And she also approves of fanfic as long as you don't make Daya and men date men. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's so I thought really that was nice. really cool that she also said that because it's like these characters are not straight. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't make Please them don't straight. Please don't make them straight. Yeah. 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 That it's nice too because I I I think we probably should have prefaced this because this is a podcast. You don't necessarily see our faces. Maddie and I are both white. Yeah. So the game as we dig into it is very diverse in a really fun and awesome way. And so as we dig into some of the actual game experiences, that comment in particular about like, can I cosplay if I'm not of the original like race of the character is something that I've wondered before, just in general of like, do people feel okay with that or not? Because you see so many white people get mad when people do it like, like the Little Mermaid Mm -hmm. shit, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like frustrates me to no goddamn end, but it's nice to hear her come out and say like, no, the... The characters I just want you to and embrace as long the as you're not doing the things that are obviously racist yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like just love the characters please <laughs> yeah 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 exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. um and, and that's all good. I have for critical reception it Yay. was very well received I yeah. was very happy to see all the positive loving vibes of those comment sections I would suggest anyone go read it if they're having a bad day <laughs> yeah okay should we dig into it let's dig First impressions. You go first. Ooh, I go first. Okay. So first impressions, I thought it was pretty cute. I liked the art style. Mm -hmm. Right out of the gate, something that threw me for a loop a little bit, not necessarily in like a bad way, but I thought, so when you first load up this game, you get a, I don't know if it's technically black and white, but it's like a monotone color of the outlines of the main four main characters And they spin kind of like in a lottery system. Mm -hmm. And so when it spins in the lottery and then it lands on Dia first, I thought that we were getting random people that we would get to see. And so I was wondering for the first maybe like 10 or 15 minutes, am I seeing it from one perspective? And then I'm going to see the same thing from a different perspective. Would Maddie have gotten it in a different order? And I think by the end, I realized like, okay, I don't think that she did it that way. It was too crafted in the way that the stories flowed that I just, I don't think that she did it that way. But my first impression was like, oh, am I getting a random one? That was interesting. And then my second little follow up to that was like, I was really surprised by their ages because you start off with them in what was it like third grade or second or third. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just surprised that it was starting off with them so little Mostly just because when I had anticipated going into it, I think I had seen the trailers and clips of them in high school. Yeah. And so I was just surprised that it took us back that far, but it was really fun. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. What were, what were yours? I really liked the color scheme. <laughs> the color scheme is very cute. It's really cute. It's pastel dream. I love it. <laughs> and the other one is when you open it, opens on kind of a typical thing that kids play which is like princess and go rescue the princess and I enjoyed that little men like didn't go along with it Mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty cool kind of right out the gate so yeah yeah it was very reminiscent of childhood like it felt very familiar Mm -hmm. they're even playing on like the little bridge inside of the, the playground and I was like wow that's such a vibe so relatable the whole thing felt even though I didn't understand all of it from mm-hmm. my own experiences, it still felt like real and relatable. I yeah. A lot. Yeah. So we can probably expound a little bit on the first character we get. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we start off following Dia. Yeah. And I said her name wrong. Oh, did you? Yeah. Did you do okay. that earlier? Yeah. Oh. And I even wrote it in here. I was like, Dia. Because they do it in the game. They say <laughs> I Dia. Say they make fun of <laughs> We start with Dia and we follow her. I will say I I really loved Dia. I loved her a lot. She The way that Brianna kind of develops these characters is they each have these very unique personalities. Mm-hmm. And Dia's specifically is she's very, very shy, very anxious, like socially anxious. Yeah. Like and a lot. A lot. Like a lot. <laughs> she talked about how she would be constantly like worried in social situations. And at first it started off for me like pretty re- relatable. Like I get pretty anxious in social situations sometimes and like it's fine. I It stresses me out and I like with stupid, stupid stuff. Like I don't like house parties a lot of the time because I just get stressed. Mm-hmm. And so it started off super relatable. I will say, though, that she had a lot, a lot of anxiety and more and more comes out throughout the game that just keeps kind of, I don't know, overtaking some of the scenes. Not in a bad way. I just mean she definitely has high anxiety. Mm -hmm. The other kind of aspects of Dia that we learn throughout, like, the beginning of the game is she's super freaking athletic, even as a little kid. Yeah. She was athletic, like, AF. So Dia is Indian, and mm-hmm. she's also hard of hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Deaf in one ear. Deaf in one ear. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so do we want to talk a little bit about, like, her early little kid storyline? Because I feel like that sets up so much of the rest of the story. Yeah, totally. Do you want to do that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the first thing that we get is the what I was talking about, the storyline where we meet... Min, we meet Min's twin, which, God, I can't remember his June. name. June. June. Mm-hmm. And then the other kid? What's his name? Um, I don't, Charles, Charles something? Gosh. I don't know. June or the other guy are supposed to be the ones rescuing the princess, who originally is Min, and then Min is like, no, I'm not the mm-hmm. princess. So then Dia's the princess, and Min is the one that rescues her, even though... It was supposed to be June. <laughs> I just thought it was cute. And it you kind so of get cute. some really early, like, crushy Super vibes. crushy vibes. Yeah, like, super crushy. Very crushy vibes. Like, you get the idea that Min is very, like, possessive of Dia in a way. Yeah, yeah. The next thing that happens is it cuts to a baseball game. And Dia is with Min at the baseball game. Mm-hmm. And they go to get popcorn. And I... I think it's it's really just, like, slice of life. It's very slice of life. Yeah. yeah. And I love the way, like, this is very, very visual novel-y. So mm-hmm. this, is, this is very visual novel-y. But they had a fun interaction with, like, the different elements of the scene. Yeah. Where you could, like, click on the baseball diamond at this baseball game. Mm-hmm. And you could get a little snippet of a story of what happens when you look over that direction. Yeah. It's like, oh, they hit the ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. When they go to get popcorn, they start playing metal music and Min starts smacking people out of the way with like a Yes. A, a literal a like baseball bat. Yeah. Like a like literal. literally hitting people with a baseball bat. Yeah. And They're still in like second or third grade or something. I think at that point I hadn't muted it because then metal music was just blasting oh. out of my laptop. And yeah. DK was like, what are you? <laughs> what? watching i was like oh let's play this game and he's like i'm just not used to that sound coming out of your laptop <laughs> you get to pet a dog that was the other thing that i thought was really cute. yes i did he's... write down that you could pet the dog you could pet the dog <laughs> well dia loves dogs yeah so it makes sense yeah. yeah the funny thing i i really liked about min and her baseball bat shenanigans and the metal music is dia and min are like super opposite totally super super opposites and so when we talk about dia's very socially anxious demeanor you hear her thoughts in her head like the whole game about how she's worried about you know oh god did I say the wrong thing have I not Mm -hmm. been talking like enough or what's what's going on am I doing the right thing and literally the baseball game is the first moment of that because she wants to pet the dog yeah and she's like should I speak up or should I just tell men to speak up for me and like ask if I can pet the dog 
And I don't know what you picked, but I said speak up for yourself. Yeah, I did too. Okay, yeah. And but then Min just does it for you anyway. <laughs> Min does yeah. it anyway. And because she hems and haws for so long about like, oh God, how do I ask? I need to practice in my head, which was actually very relatable. And I just love that. I love yeah. that little dichotomy. And they give you that slice right away about she really wants to pet the dog. Min is going to do literally anything she can to make sure that Dia can pet this dog. What else? What's after that? Um, well, this is the big reveal. That was devastating. Devastating reveal. Min is moving away. Yeah. The biggest, I feel like, sad friend happening when you're a kid in elementary yeah, school. Yeah, like someone moving away. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't have any control over it. And back yeah. then in whatever, 2000 and I guess if this game was generally 2008, it would have been early 2000s. Like, they didn't have any communication yet. No. Yeah. Yeah. And then that, that's where you start getting a glimpse, too, of the their relationships with their parents. Because Dia had said, I can't even write you. My parents don't like you, which yeah. was heartbreaking. Yeah, heartbreaking. that's right. Yeah. And I guess we didn't talk about men a lot either. Men is Korean. Um, and we also get a little glimpse into their cultures, too, because they teach each other words in their own languages, which yeah. is so Wait, good. And that's, that's at this point or not until high school? Um, no, it's in the baseball game. Okay. Like, yeah, so yeah, yeah. should we talk about what they teach each yes, other? Yes, I love it so Okay, much. so... They say that they're teaching each other how to say hi, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and what Dia teaches Min is, I like farts. <laughs> I like to fart. I like to <laughs> fart. And I think we should get to what Min yeah, teaches we should Dia say later, because yeah. it's purposefully Mysterious. not until we get to Min's perspective that we know what... Which you know that she probably didn't teach her the thing mm-hmm. that you think it is, because when Dia says it... Min is like, and don't tell anyone else that, just tell me. Yeah. And I, and so you get a hint that it's not high. But what is it? But what is it? I was, I was so pressed about what it could possibly be that I considered trying to figure out how to rewind and get the actual, like, Korean and <laughs> attempt to learn it. And then I was like, no, if they wanted me to know, they would have told me. So I'm going to wait. Okay. I'm going to say a little controversial thing. Ooh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I also will preface this by saying I, I understand as the story starts to unfold why Min is this way, mm-hmm. but at this point, Min starts. Min has rubbed me a little bit the wrong way, if yeah. I'm being honest. Yeah. So when it started to rub me the wrong way is when Dia mentions Noel, who is her friend, mm-hmm. briefly, and Min essentially is just like, "Oh, I hate her." I was like, "Ooh, mm-hmm. that's really mean." Yeah. Like she even says, as a little kid, I can't remember the exact words, but I think she says like. Probably like, kill her or yeah, like, like she's very her. violent. Min is yeah. very violent and yeah. speaks a lot of very, it's not even like I want to beat you up. It's really like I'm going to kill you. I'm going to like slit your throat. Like it's, yeah. it's very violent. Yeah. I think I had assumed at that point that Min had a crush on Dia. Yeah. And because she seemed very aggressive, Min did. That she was taking it out as like a rivalry, like she was jealous, is yeah. kind of the vibe that I had. No, gotten. I mean I got yeah. that. I, the... I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I still. I think we'll she goes too far it. in other scenes too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we'll get more into it. Oh, and then right before that scene ends, mm-hmm. though, we get I think a tiny little moment that's pretty sweet between those two. So they bonded over baseball. Mm-hmm. Because they're the only girls that like baseball. Yeah. yeah. Min is not allowed to play baseball. Her yeah. parents have told her, like, we, we get tiny snippets of it here right at the beginning that her brother can play, but she can't play. Mm-hmm. But she wants to learn how to anyway. Yeah. And they talk about how they have this uh, out on the field during the baseball game that day. They have this baseball couple or whatever where one throws this impossibly hard to hit knuckleball that's right and the catcher behind him always catches the knuckleball and min is like i want to be them like i want to be the person with the knuckleball and you can catch like the knuckleballs and we like we have this little fun name where we're diamond and that's where (laughs) we get into the dia versus dia yes but they have like this super cute little moment about how they want to like, figure out a way to end up becoming friends again at the end of all of this. And I just thought that was super, super sweet and yeah. sad and yeah. relatable as a little kid. Like, I had friends move away, and I was the friend that moved away at a point, and it's, yeah. it sucks, you know? Yeah. There was one line that we had from Dia that I loved about her character, and I felt 
was super relatable for me. So mm-hmm. this game has a lot of relatable characters based on like sexuality, based on race, based yeah. on like family experiences and they also talk about women a lot. Yeah. And one of the lines that happened right at the beginning during this kind of baseball game is Dia saying that she would never want to be the pitcher. She would she wouldn't want to do that because she'd be right in the middle of everything. And when Min's like, "Why? Why wouldn't you want to be a pitcher?" She was like, "Well, usually like I'm the only girl, and I know that if I mess up, it'll look like girls just suck at baseball." Yeah, and that was I such, about that. It's yeah. such a real line. I think yes. about that constantly. You yeah, know? like yeah. it's it's a real thing. Mm-hmm. Like when when dudes mess up at something or aren't good at something it's because that dude isn't good at something and then when a girl isn't good at something that's not typically like for women all women are bad yeah, at it yeah women are bad at it yeah like it, you see that in films so much right so much. like the director is like oh a woman made a movie that flopped so women can't direct exactly yeah and what what it really is is like this one movie flopped yeah yeah whereas men make lots of movies that flop <laughs> lots of shitty ass and movies. people still give them millions of dollars right yeah 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 and so i loved love 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 that line let's time skip now time skip okay. time skip who do now we meet now <laughs> now we're in ninth grade and it is akarsha mm-hmm. okay so yeah okay i have with her cute little space buns. <laughs> yeah, I really like Akarsha, actually. Akarsha's my favorite. And now they're in ninth grade, and you also meet Noelle, who had been briefly mentioned, but you hadn't met mm-hmm. in the third grade or second grade version, whatever yeah, they are. Yeah. Noelle is like a big nerd <laughs> yeah. who has no <laughs> arm strength, is like the first yes. thing she says. Like, she has noodles for <laughs> arms or something. She has to open her water bottles for her. <laughs> Which is like, girl, <laughs> water bottles? Like, oh no. Uh-oh. <laughs> like, she really has no upper body strength or any physical, I don't know, prowess at all. Yeah. Is Which this... she admits. Like, it's Wh- not yeah. even, yeah, like, she admits it. Yeah. And she's top of class. Mm-hmm. Of course. And... Yeah you know, the smartest one out of all of them and is always studying, which mm-hmm. you get more insight into later. Mm-hmm. But you also meet Akarsha, who is very, like, boisterous and goofy. goofy weird. Very goofy. <laughs> very weird. I love how weird she is. It's yeah. So fucking weird. Yeah, she's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> Like, we'll talk about maybe some of the weirder scenes as we get through, but Akarsha is weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But in a great way. In a great way. I love and her. And again, it's like slice of life. You're like walking around. You s- learn that Noelle's not feeling well at all, mm-hmm. but her parents made her come to school to take her tests because she yep. couldn't miss school. Mm-hmm. And even... When it gets to gym class, Mm -hmm. she's like, I have to go to gym class because if I miss gym class, I'm going to get a B. And if I get a B, it's going to lower all of my GPA and I I can't miss gym class. Yeah. I think they call it like the Asian fail is what they joke about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're like... Yeah. Well, uh, Noelle's Taiwanese, I believe, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, Yeah. I think all of the four friends are and Asian. Akarsha is also Indian. Yes, and Akarsha yeah. is Indian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Um, but you can see like the kind of pressure because I think they even look at grades on the walls too. Yeah, you get a little snippet of that. Mm-hmm. In sh- her- so the other thing that I thought was really interesting that she did mm-hmm. is when we get to the home lives of the girls. Yeah, the parents aren't fully formed. <gasps> I know that it's was kind so of like. Uh, like the Charlie Brown, like Charlie Brown, yeah yeah. yeah, 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 and they don't have faces; mm-hmm. they're just outlines that are kind of filled in and like gray, gray, yeah, yeah. Um, like they're in shadow almost. Yeah. yeah, it felt it was a really interesting choice. I wrote it down too, where I was like, "Wow, it's kind of interesting that she did that because it feels so disconnected." Like the they just feel like they're on totally different planes almost yeah yeah because i don't think any of the girls have a relationship with their parents that was discussed that was positive or extremely positive or extremely yeah positive. there's probably things that they like about their parents but yeah. mostly the stuff that we learn is not yeah 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 i think at some point noel describes her parents as like they're good people and bad parents is i think how she describes yeah. it yeah 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 mm-hmm. 
So we start going to gym class. Noelle literally faints. She's mm-hmm. that sick. And so Akarsha is an awesome friend and a weirdo and is like, I'm going to do something. Promise not to get mad. She goes off and pulls the fire alarm. But it's not just a fire alarm, which was so fucking funny. Yeah. <laughs> so the fire alarm, she also hacks. That That's implied, right? Yeah. Like, I think she literally says she it. hacks it. Yeah. 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 So she also hacks it to play the Super Mario theme mm-hmm. song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So surprising and so funny. Yeah. Of course, Akarsha would make it the Mario theme song and not just pull the the freaking fire alarm. I loved it. Yeah. It was fun. So you go out into the field and I just... Oh, this is where she gets a glimpse of the student, the new student. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who she recognizes. And then that night, it's hinted that it's Min, right? Yeah. Yeah strongly and hinted strongly hinted mm-hmm. and then that night dia gets home and has a dream mm. flashback sequence mm. which little fun fact this was what uh brianna said was her favorite scene oh this like dream sequence. it was a really good scene which and it didn't even exist like it wasn't even real that wasn't real no it was a dream <laughs> fuck i thought it was real well, I mean, like, I thought it was, I thought it was a dream, but that she had remembered it. Like, you know, you dream about, like, past memory. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. No, I mean, maybe. maybe. I don't know. That's cute. They're back in third grade. Right. And Min takes her on a date to the dog park. Mm-hmm. And I went to the little dog section. Because of course I went to the little dog section. <laughs> I have little dogs. So, and and Dia plays frisbee with a, a chihuahua, chihuahua. Which yeah. we both have chihuahuas. <laughs> so I was like, oh my God, Momo. Bonding. <laughs> Cute. Of course. And the other thing that we get a glimpse of is Dia's kind of realization mm-hmm. that she's gay because in the dream... Min, like, starts to hold her face, and she's like, oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> it's hot in here, somebody it's please. Hot. Yeah, it's hot in here. <laughs> and then she wakes up, and she's like, I think uh, I might uh, like women. <laughs> like, I am a lesbian. <laughs> yeah. And, I, I yeah. will say that one was, uh, I saw reading through the reviews, a lot of people really liked that Dia's character through the story is actually her realizing the fact that she's a lesbian because the other girls um i don't know about noelle and and we can talk about her like later but the other girls i think have a better understanding of their sexuality a little bit more than dia does and so a lot of people Mm -hmm. really appreciated that min definitely knows min knows and we hear later from akarsha that she knows that she's bi yeah and so for dia this was kind of her little awakening and and realizing that she's gay and that was really i think helpful for people they they called it out a lot yeah they really appreciated it i love the dog park (laughs) i wonder what the big dog section is like i don't want to (laughs) know i don't even want to know who cares i don't need it (laughs) We talked about Dia. She's kind of having this awakening. Mm -hmm. We are walking to school. And I don't think we mentioned, like, the context and relationship that she has with Akarsha herself. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like she was forced by her parents, kind of, to walk with Akarsha to school because they lived nearby is kind of the vibe that I got from it. Oh, I didn't even pick that up. Because they, I think the very first line when we meet Akarsha was something on the lines of, like, well, when you're forced to be with each other, like, this much, then you learn to tolerate them. Like, Oh. It was, um, it might not have been that harsh, but it sounded very much so like her parents wanted I didn't her to even walk catch with that. them. Akarsha is very much so uh, like the third in their set of two, I think is the way that I would describe it. Yeah. Like Noelle and Dia are very much so like best friends. Very like Noelle's very protective of Dia and Dia relies so much Dia's on Noelle. Dia's very attached to Very Noelle. attached. Very, very attached. Even when they were young, you get a little like flashback of... Dia just kind of constantly sticking to yeah, like following Noelle. around and not wanting to be alone. And yeah. like I think they mentioned that she cries when Noelle's not there. So yeah. very attached. And Akarsha is kind of this like third little like tag along buddy. And so they're walking to school and they usually have these really fun conversations where Akarsha asks really stupid, stupid questions. questions. <laughs> like okay, Maddie, would you eat a tiny two inch man 
for one million dollars. No, what I if wouldn't. He tasted like a Cheeto. <laughs> I wouldn't because if it's a sentient Cheeto, I cannot (laughs) murder someone. That's illegal. And now we're going to get to the character that I identified with the most. Do you identify with Noelle? Yes. Are you kidding me? Okay. Okay. Let's let's talk about Noelle. Wait, hold on. I think uh, before we get to her main storyline, TLDR, they started a baseball team. I I also think the other thing, the one more thing I want to mention is this is when you get a sense of how socially anxious Dia is oh. because when they join the baseball club, mm-hmm. Noel joins just to support Dia. Mm-hmm. And then when they're doing a round of intros, Dia gets so, so anxious mm-hmm. that she literally gets up and runs away. Yeah. Well, like, and I think she, it even says like, she like freaking plays dead at some point. I was like, she, what the fuck? She like <laughs> lays down and closes her eyes so yeah. that she doesn't talk to someone. Yeah. And Noelle is like, it's okay. It just takes her a while to like warm up to people. Yeah. Which is pretty extreme. Pretty like, extreme. that is pretty extreme social anxiety. I did see someone ask somewhere, maybe it was on the Reddit, uh, whether or not Dia was coded as autistic. That's a interesting um, point. The response that I read was that it was not canon that we she was autistic, but that Brianna had written her based on her experiences with herself and others. And, you know, hadn't been diagnosed or anything like that, so wasn't totally sure, and she wasn't necessarily written that way, but she acknowledged that it was a little extreme. She also, yeah, like, when it gets to the time where Dia would introduce herself, she runs away. Mm -hmm. And And then she runs! Runs (laughs) right into Min! (laughs) Yay, Min's back! Yeah, Min's back. (laughs) Well, yay for a second. For a second. (laughs) Because this is... This is the scene that I had the hardest time with, with yeah. Min. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about it? You want me to no, 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 go for it. Um, so she runs into Min in the locker room, and Min is running late to going and joining the baseball, baseball. team, yeah. of course. And she's like, oh my god, what are you doing here? Oh my god. You know? And it turns out that Min's actually been expelled from her last school, something to do with knives and, like, threatening people and very intense yeah. And so still Dia is like super excited to see Min and Min is, you know, so pumped to see Dia. And then that's when Noelle and Akarsha eventually like walk in and be like, what's going on here? And Noelle and Min obviously hate each other. Maddie talked about that earlier, how Min just did not have a nice word to say but about Noelle. I would say that <sighs> this is what, yeah, go for it. No, <laughs> no go ahead. I want to hear what you got to say. I just felt like each other isn't fair because I don't think it's the thing that I didn't like is mm-hmm. I really think that Min is so mean to Noel. Like what 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 is she supposed uh, yeah. to act like? I agree with that. Like nice? Yeah. Like yeah. gracious? How how do you how do you have any sort of positive conversation if someone is literally saying to kill fuck you. you, I'm gonna kill you? Yeah. Literally those words. Literally. Yeah. And this is where I had my like major problem with Min mm-hmm. and it took me a while to get over well because it wasn't even like her saying those really mean things i don't think i could be friends with somebody who was that mean um it felt like they weren't taking it seriously enough Mm -hmm. for the words that were being said yeah yeah and so i was having a really major disconnect yeah this was the part where i kind of lost the thread of the story a little bit even Mm. i don't know if this is going to be like controversial or something i just it, I found it hard to even like Dia or Akarsha because, because someone they is approved of because yeah. they're they weren't saying anything. Yeah, and Min was literally telling Noel like "fuck you, I'm going to kill you." Yeah. Well, and then she actually attacks Akarsha, and it's not even just like a like out of nowhere. Yeah, it was out of nowhere and she literally is on the ground strangling her. Like it yeah. wasn't even just uh like a petty fight. I'm going to yank your hair shenanigans, which is still like I never got into a fight like that, but you know what, whatever. No, me either. But she was actually strangling her like on top of her and strangling her and they didn't stop I think until the other folks come no. back in. Oh wait, what happened? Akarsha. <gasps> Oh, is so God. smart. Oh, 
Honestly, though, this was smart. It was smart, and it was so disgusting. Akarsha reaches into her pants and gets period blood and wipes the period blood on Min's face to get Min to stop strangling her. It was a good idea, but what the fuck? (laughs) fucked up but she had to do what she had to do i know and like this whole scene was just a really weird scene for me because like one i i totally agree with you like that's just too far and we get a lot more insight into men later we can talk about it but it's pretty far yeah and it made me a little uncomfortable yep yeah but i i get it and then at that point i think end up going to noel and it like transitions over we pretty much like end that scene with Akarsha and Min becoming friends, kind of. That's the first example yeah. of the sad, broken, recorded Titanic song that starts to play. Um, you hear that whenever they bond. If Got it. You would know that if you had the volume up. Up Man. louder. <laughs> and how about you, like, tell us about Noah, since it yeah, seems like that was... I think, like, I don't need... I feel like at this... The main gist is just that Noel is, like, very... All she does is study, and her Mm -hmm. parents don't let her do hardly anything else. Like anything. The one line or part that sticks out to me is she's talking to her mom, asking if she can go hang out with with, uh, Dia, Mm -hmm. and... She, her mom says, if you don't do it, will she still be your friend? Mm. And she says, yeah. And she's like, well, then don't do it because it's a waste of your time. Friendship, you should have the minimum level of time to keep the friendship going. So it was like the mom acknowledged that she needed a friend, but only to a point that like... It didn't interfere with anything else. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing that you get... Uh, a hint of is every time she talks like walks in the door her mom is like telling her a story of another asian american Mm -hmm. that did some insane successful thing and Mm -hmm. was like i'm gonna clip out this article and put it on your wall for you as inspiration yeah so i'm curious when you said that you like bonded with noah or you felt like similar to her was it because you felt like you had those kinds of high standards that noelle had for herself or was it something else yeah my parents didn't didn't give me any like mm-hmm. unrealistic like or high standards so so i will admit like the asian parent relationships in here i didn't i i understood them and mm-hmm. i enjoyed kind of learning about them and from friends that i have i definitely understand but the thing that i connected with about noel was just the intrinsic mm-hmm motivation that you have about it and like the perfectionism Mm -hmm. and also just not not understanding why someone is the way they are yeah I I just kind of connected more with that and then also like I've not been like the strongest person my whole life it's not like I'm particularly fit so I I also kind of water for you (laughs) (laughs) not that level but like I I am I just I never felt like in high school I fit into a single group. Mm. And even now, like, I don't feel like I fit into, like, one single group of people. Mm -hmm. And I always felt kind of on the, like... The cusp edge. Yeah, yeah. of different groups, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I had some friends who were, like, the theater kids. And I had some friends who were, like, the nerdy kids. And I had some friends who were the band kids. And I never felt fully part of any one group. Yeah. And I felt like that is how Noelle was feeling. And mm-hmm. so I just kind of connected with that. Yeah. And just ended up liking her because I recognize, like, how mean the other, like, Min was to her. And, mm-hmm. like, I think we've all had really mean girl experiences mm-hmm. in, like, middle school Girls or high mean. school. <laughs> really, really mean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I shaved my arm hair for like years because oh. one girl made a nasty comment about my arm hair because I have pale skin and dark hair. Oh, that's so sad. I had a friend that did that. Oh, I, mm. stupid. It's stupid. Anyways, yeah. it, it's just like, you know, girls can be really mean. And and yeah. the thing that also made me sad was that Dia and Akarsha like weren't necessarily sticking up for her. Yeah, I understood that similarly. I, I'm not a perfectionist as much as I just want to succeed. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I do think that the interesting thing about Noel and the insight that, like, I learned a lot from this game and about um, the totally. cultures that they were a part of 
And I have friends that talk about like the Asian parent standard and, Mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And you don't really understand when you don't grow up with it or when you're not a part of that culture. And I appreciated about Noelle's scenes here is I always kind of felt like I kept myself to a high standard. And so when they talked about stuff like that, I was like, I understand because I keep myself to a high standard. But it was different, you know, yeah, because it is different. my my parents never pushed that on me and they never mm-hmm. forced me to. And if I would have came home with a B, they would have been like, whatever. And yeah. I didn't want a B because Bs are for losers. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I put that standard for myself. Yeah. And so I did appreciate appreciate learning about Noelle, what that experience was like and how wrong that I was and thinking that I understood because I did not. You know? Yeah, totally. It's, yeah. it's very different. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Um, but I did really like learning more about Noelle's character. Mm-hmm. And I think at the way that the story kind of goes on from there is you learn more about Noelle from Noelle's perspective, but you're still getting the whole group and like yeah. the whole storyline. It just starts to progress. Yeah. yeah. And so you have like the baseball team, they start having like matches and stuff mm-hmm. at that point. Um, I Oh, you learn about the the fact that Min has learned how to throw, throw a knuckleball. Knuckle ball. And only Dia can and catch only it. only Dia can catch it. Oh. Yeah. And the other thing that starts to develop is Min and Dia have, like, obviously crushes on each other. Oh, obviously. And it starts yeah. to develop more. Like, they're, they like each other and it's kind of a will they, won't they situation. Mm-hmm. And they all start to become closer friends. Uh, there's one moment where... Noelle and Akarsha go looking for Dia and Min who have disappeared before practice. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think that's when we swap to Akarsha's point of view. Okay. But yes, yeah. Yeah, so we swap to Akarsha's point of view and they're in the gym. And I actually have like a note here that I wanted to talk about because Mm -hmm. they're in the gym and Akarsha starts yelling and hearing the echo Mm -hmm. and having fun with it. And Noelle's like, okay, I'm going to leave because you're just going to be doing this for forever. But then once Noelle leaves, she yells this, like, I'm depressed. I'm a fraud. I'm a fraud. And, and oh, the other thing that's kind of going on throughout this is Akarsha's very smart, Mm -hmm. but she doesn't Oh, she hides it. it. Yeah. She hides it. And she's, like, number two right behind Noelle. And they joke about her, like, cheating and stuff. Because at first they, like, when they talk about the grade, she's like, oh, yeah, she's second, but she must be cheating. And then she goes on later to make jokes about, like, words I don't even understand about biology. I was like, what the fuck is that word? No, she's she's, really smart. She's super smart. Yeah. 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 She just yells just these kind of negative things that she feels about herself just getting it out of her system i think the saddest like the very end was the like i sometimes think about getting in front of a car or walking in front of a car in front of the street and not moving not moving not getting out of the way yeah Yeah, it was it was a very very sad rant and then min pops up and they have the titanic moment do you want to do the titanic (laughs) moment (laughs) so this is the moment they Min, Min comes out. We learn a kind of fun thing about Min in that she had went to the family bathroom. So I think it's starting to... I can't... Um, you go for it. Well, so at that point, I was like, oh, is Min trans? Is Min That's non-binary? Yeah. Um, it, w- they did not clear it up no. in the game. I did read afterwards that Min is non-binary. Got it. And that... Her pronouns are she, her during the time of the story and later she, they, but she still goes by she quite a bit. So I didn't like, I didn't change the pronouns here because she goes by both. Yeah. But you get kind of that little mini class. I had a feeling that that's where it, yeah. Yeah. I wasn't sure if she was going to come out as trans or not just because we do see scenes later about like her cutting her hair and not Mm -hmm. wanting to dress feminine and that kind of thing. And so I was like, oh, are they going to make her a trans character? There is a trans character in here, though. Surprise. I keep spotting them, just like in Dream Daddy. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm missing these. (laughs) Just like in Dream Daddy. (laughs) Um, But there is a trans character. It's Liz, the baseball. Um, There's uh, two main seniors that play baseball in the baseball club, and one of them is named Liz, like a lizard, but not really. And That's just what they say. Yeah, yeah. Liz, Liz is is trans oh yeah yeah um they had like a one-liner in there about how she used to play baseball with with dia and remember dia only played in in groups with boys 
Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Putting um, two and two together. I, I did not. Um, and that is canon. I validated it later so that I wouldn't mm-hmm. look like an idiot um, during this podcast. But yeah. uh, anyway, you learn that interesting bit about men, get a tiny little glimpse into that. And then it turns out she heard Akarsha on her little rant the whole time and to cheer her up she's like do you want to like ride on the skateboard with me and then they ride on the skateboard like they're in the front of the titanic ship and the stupid broken recorder my heart will go on is playing in the background if that's not the cutest yeah. fucking scene i've ever seen in my and whole this life this is when i started to get back into it because i was like okay men's not that yeah. mean i the middle bit after the fight was like very hard for me. Yeah. Um, men get so much better. But then she gets a lot better. Yeah. And we learn more about men that makes her a lot better. The more. other thing that I wanted to mention is that Akarsha in that moment kind of reminded me of Sayori. A little bit. That's kind of yeah. fun. Yeah. It was yeah. just giving me Sayori vibes in that moment mm-hmm. of someone who's like very bubbly, very mm-hmm. goofy, and then behind the scenes is just mm-hmm. using that as a cover almost. Yeah. Obviously, this game does not go the direction <laughs> as Doki, but I, I still wanted to make that connection. I was like, oh, I'm like seeing that connection. Yeah. So. And it was, uh, yeah, actually similar to in that uh, Akarsha was the super, super bubbly, happy one that mm-hmm. was always making jokes. And literally, I think she says that she makes the jokes like in her rant. It's like she yeah. makes the jokes because she doesn't want to hurt and because you can't say that she failed if she never tried kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. 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 I really like Akarsha. She's my good friend. Mm-hmm. Um, at this point, I think near the very end, they, they finally find Akarsha. They find Dia too. She's off running miles. That's what she does when she's stressed out. Um, they play against, um, June, Min's brother. Yeah. Um, on this like baseball team that's come to like scrimmage Mm -hmm. and Hayden, I looked up his name Yes. and their friend Hayden, they win because they have the knuckleball. That's Mm -hmm. amazing. And then... They decide to... I still don't understand this. Why? Oh, and Noelle does the good fake out. Oh, the good fake out. Yeah. yeah. And I couldn't figure out... Actually, you should talk about it. You should talk <laughs> about it. I really... Uh, I couldn't figure out if it was actually legal or not. Like, I don't know baseball yeah. at all. So I was like, is that real? Well, I mean, Noelle researched it, so... <laughs> She did say it was a part of She's the really smart. <laughs> she said so, it was legal. <laughs> yeah. So now the story just goes along and they they win the, the baseball game and it shifts to Min's perspective. Mm-hmm. Right? After the throwing the Gatorade soaked pad inside of the bus. Oh, I forgot about that. That's okay. We're going to move on. You guys get that one liner. Play it yourself. It's free. <laughs> you shift to Min's perspective and you do get a little glimpse into Min growing up. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about it? Do you want me to talk about it? Mm, I want you to talk about it. Okay. So this is where we kind of start to understand why Min is so violent. Mm -hmm. And this is where the content warnings come into play. Mm -hmm. So we learn that Min's dad is pretty Abusive. abusive. He's an abusive piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. And he throws, like, literally throws things at her. And that is when it becomes clear why she's always wearing Band-Aids. I mean, maybe I shouldn't make that assumption, but Mm. it felt like that was why. I wrote the same thing. I couldn't figure out if it's because Min was constantly getting in, like, scuffles and fights because she's aggressive. Or if it was literally because her dad's beating the shit out of her. I could not figure it out. But I made the same note when we saw that scene. Yeah. Yeah. And he, him and... The mom are very intense about gender roles Mm -hmm. is the other thing that Mm -hmm. you learn about men's home life. And men is one that speaks out against that stuff. And her twin brother is kind of complacent. He's pretty complacent. Which I think is fair from a self-preservation perspective, right? His perspective is just wait it out. Yeah. Follow the rules, and then when you're 18, you Do can get you out. Want. Yeah, you can get out. Mm-hmm. I think he literally says, "Like we can get out." Yeah. And her perspective is, "No, it's fucked up." So I'm gonna say something about it. But mm-hmm. that really pisses off the dad, obviously, and then he's abusive. So that kind of explains why she's more violent and more, in my opinion, that that gave her character oh, more of an explanation for yeah. it. Yeah. And it's really sad. I also think it made her a little bit more 
extreme because she feels like she has to stand up for the fact that yeah. like no I am this way and I want to do this and I want to live my life this way and and she has to constantly be like pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing for just her parents to, to take yeah just to exist and yeah. for her parents to take her seriously and it's not even like the the fact that she cut her hair short or that she doesn't want to wear dresses anymore it's like they have a I I love this line they're like there was a Game Boy that she shared with her brother. And at some point, they're like, it's called a Game Boy, not a Game Girl. And I was yeah. like, that breaks my heart. Yeah. I'm like, why is it called a Game Boy? I hate that. Yeah, that does <laughs> suck. No, I'm like, that's fucking sucks. Yeah. And it's so, like, I can, I understand so much more about, like, why she is the way she is after seeing a little bit of that. Um, and it really was pretty heartbreaking. Yeah. Oh. Yep. So. And the story starts to advance because... Min obviously wants to ask out Dia, and Mm -hmm. she starts to talk with Akarsha about it, and Akarsha also knows that Dia has a crush on Min, and starts to talk to Dia about it, and the other thing that we get a hint of, or not a hint of, the other thing that happens is Noelle and Mm. Min actually finally bond bond over their parents not letting them do anything, Mm -hmm. and they want to go to lunch with the baseball team, but their parents won't let them. Mm-hmm. So in order to do it, they tell each other's parents that Noel is going to tutor Min. Mm-hmm. And they meet at the library, and the parents go to the library <laughs> to see that they're there <laughs> studying. And then after the parents leave them at the library, they walk to the restaurant to go get um, mm-hmm. lunch with the baseball team. And then they finally start to become friends, which yeah. is good. Yeah, I really liked um, when their relationship kind of finally got to that place. Yeah. Because it still wasn't like, a, oh, we're best friends now. Look at us. We're smiling all the time. They're still themselves. But you could see that there was like love and care there a little bit more than yeah. there was before. Yeah. yeah. And, and acceptance a little bit too. And men's not like just insanely mean to her anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, insane. <laughs> yeah. And I think uh, the final, like, little cherry on top of their friendship cake is at the restaurant when they apparently, like, drink a Indian version. It's not actually ketchup, but, like, an Indian condiment instead of a beverage because they don't understand that it's, What like... <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> and they do it together and they look like idiots together. And, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. And, and Dia and Akarsha, like, make fun of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're, like, taking really pictures. Fun. Yeah. I really liked it. Yeah. <laughs> And the next thing that happens is Min asks out Dia to lunch, like, on a date. On a date. On a date. Yeah. And then the other little bit that you get that's, like, Min and Noel bonding is Min asks Noel for advice on mm-hmm. where to go with Dia. And so Noel tells her, like, oh, she likes desserts and here's a place that's near the school that you can go to. Yeah. Well, I think she originally lists some things that are not attainable, like Disney World yeah. and stuff, but then yeah. was like, or you could take her to dessert <laughs> at this place. And also gives her what Dia's favorite things are, like blue flavored things, peanut butter. In like a ranking order. In a ranked it order. Was so it was super cute. I was like, could my friends name a ranked order of my favorite foods? And I'm like, I don't think they could. <laughs> Mint chocolate chip ice cream. <gasps> That's so sweet. Well, you're vanilla. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Throwback. Um, So then it ends with them going on the date. Do you want to do it? I I just love this little date. Like they go on a date. They're both so goddamn nervous. Yeah. Um, Luckily, um, Min, you know, has been talking with Noelle and orders the bluest thing on the menu Mm -hmm. to make sure that Dia likes it. And then you you see Min texting back and forth with Noelle and with Akarsha. And or I think maybe just with Noel, I don't know, I can't remember. And then I think it's all three of them. Yeah, Dia yeah. Dia sprints out and gets really nervous and runs to the bathroom. And then you turn around as men, and the two are sitting there, both Noel and Akarsha, in these terrible disguises. Yeah, I loved it so much. It was so funny, and they're of course watching them on their date and like with commentary and stuff, and they're supporting Min and saying like, "Don't worry, she's in the bathroom because she's nervous and she's texting us because she's like scared, but it's not because she's not happy or whatever." Yeah, 
and it's so cute. And they kiss, and it's the cutest kiss in the whole world. Yeah, it is really cute, and it's a nice ending. So they kiss, and then they get kicked out because when Min kisses Dia, she breaks the table. Yeah, she, she like... literally crawls on top of the table to kiss her. Which sounds like Min. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, everyone. I didn't know where to put it, so I figured I'd put it here, but we forgot to come back to what Min had taught Dia to say to her, and it was, I love you. Okay, bye. And then you do a little, that's when it ends. Yeah, that's when I said. And you do a little fast forward. Yeah. And it's a little time skip. And Min and Dia are adopting another Mm -hmm. dog together. And it's a Pomeranian. They're so cute. Yeah. That's cute. Yeah. It's very cute. Which I assume is the palm from the, yeah, yeah. Palm. Yeah. Um, I love that so much. Yeah. Yeah. It was a cute little, cute little game. And it was really quick. Like, I think it only took me three. Three hours? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I look forward. I'm definitely going to play the sequel, I think. I, I really like it. Yeah, me that. too. Mm-hmm. Do you want to get into thoughts, like final thoughts? Yeah, I think so. Go for it. Um, so final thoughts. I This was the very first visual novel, visual novel, I think, that we've done. Yeah. Um, I haven't really played just a really solid visual novel yet. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought that it was super well written. I thought it was really funny. And I loved the additional, like, nuance to the characters and the different representation. Because even if the the characters didn't necessarily represent me, I still found things that I understood and empathized with. And it helped me learn new things, which I loved. Mm-hmm. And overall, I I feel like I was kind of teary-eyed about half the time. Like, it was, just, oh, really? it was just so sweet. The whole time I was like, oh, my God, I love it. I don't mm-hmm. think I ever actually cried. But the whole time I kind of felt like a little lump in my throat. I was like, oh, my God, this is, like, so cute and so sweet. And so I just – I loved it. Yeah. yeah. My final thoughts were I loved it. And it's free. So literally no one should not go play it. Yeah. 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 Um, and I guess if I'm going to give a recommendation, I'm going to give mine space funds. That's going to be my rating for today because I literally would die for Akarsha's space funds. And I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a four out of five. Okay. Yeah. I consider it a five out of five. And the only reason that I'm not doing five out of five is because I, I don't know, like, I'm glad that I played it. I really, really enjoyed it and all of that jazz. But I wasn't, like, totally blown away with everything. You know, it was a really good, sweet little visual novel, though. Yep. Mm -hmm. I agree. So my final thoughts are, I think it was, yeah, very much a visual novel. Mm -hmm. It's no, (laughs) almost no, like, gameplay. It was mostly, almost like, not fan fiction. That's a terrible word for it. But, you know, like, it it was a cute little story. Have you ever read Webtoons before? Are you familiar with Webtoons I'm familiar with them, but I haven't read them myself. So, I've read a couple, mainly Heartstopper being, like, the one that got me into it. Mm -hmm. Or, I read Heartstopper because the Netflix show was good, and it was based on a Webtoon. Yeah. And then I found out that a bunch of shows are actually based on Webtoons. So, there's a K-drama called Business Proposal that I also watched that's based on a webtoon. Was that the one you talked about before? No, that's oh. that's a different one. But okay. anyways, it's there this reminded me of like an animated webtoon essentially. Mm. Mm-hmm. So if I think about who I would recommend it to, if you like webtoons or comics or graphic novels, mm-hmm. I I would think you would really like this. And yeah. especially Heartstopper, I felt was really similar to this because Heartstopper is also about like young lgbtq plus characters mm-hmm. kind of coming of age in a way and so i i really liked i really liked it i thought it was cute oh not didn't again it didn't like blow me away either mm-hmm. so i had it and then the, i had the issue with men in the middle yeah that i found a little hard to get over because mm-hmm. it felt like it was almost playing it off as like a joke but to me it it, it was overstepped serious the line of joke and how yeah. mean she was and how violent she was but then you get a anyway, so <laughs> it's like a four, three point five four. I'm gonna round up to four mm-hmm. global warmings because that was the team name I picked. I also picked global warming. They're <laughs> just the same. That's fine. So one of the only things that you get to select is the name of their baseball team, mm-hmm. and I picked global warming because my girl Noelle. I had to support her. <laughs> also, it was just so fucking funny. She's like, everything would lose to global warming. Yeah. Yeah, everything loses to global warming in the end. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I don't think that you're required to be an Asian LGBTQ Not at all. person to bond with the characters in the story. And if anything, like I said, you learn stuff. So yeah. it's good. I agree. On topic. On topic. On topic, off topic. What are you playing right now, Bridget? What am I playing? Okay, so I have, I just got finished with Littlewood. I 100%ed okay. it. And so That's I, on my list. Is it good? Um, I liked it. I would consider it more of an Animal Crossing and less of a Stardew Valley. Okay. So mentally prepare yourself for that. But I liked it. It got a little repetitive, so I quit after I... But you 100%ed it? I was bored. It's, it's oh, fine. Okay. Um, I, I wouldn't okay. have, I wouldn't have 100%ed it if I didn't want to, like, mindless click. I'll just say it that way. It's yeah. very grindy. Um, and so I moved on last week to Potion Permit. Have you heard of Potion Permit yet? Mm-mm. Um, so it is a game that I thought was going to be kind of similar to Stardew Valley. You play as a, I think it's like a doctor, some like alchemist doctor where you mm. make potions and heal people in the town and you have to collect the stuff, you know, in the woods to make the potions yeah. and all that kind of jazz, fix up your house, meet, okay. the, meet the characters, date them, that kind oh, of thing. Yeah. And so I had picked that one up. I kind of regret it a little bit. I know. (laughs) And like describing this scene, you're like, yeah, that sounds great. And I'm like, no, (laughs) it's fine. I'm I'm hoping that a year from now it gets an update and I'll play it then. Mm -hmm. It's pretty buggy still. Um, Okay. And the, I can't figure out if I am playing wrong or I don't understand something. Mm But in those games that have, like, the day clocks, you know, usually you're kind of pressed for time. Or if it's, a like, a lazy day, you finish by, like, 5 p.m. And you're like, whatever, yeah. I'll go to sleep early. I was finishing by, like, 10 a.m. Like, the first week, week and a half of the yeah. in-game time. And I was like, mm. Nothing to do. Yeah. And then there yeah. are, like, little polish things that, like, the kind of stuff that makes games magical, those little polishes, mm-hmm. weren't there for me. So, like, as an example, they had a character... Um, like as a part of the the storyline on like the third or fourth day or something, you finally get the instruction to meet the townspeople. Yeah. I had been talking to them for like three days. Yeah. And I finished getting this instruction from the mayor to meet the townspeople, finish out the like conversation. And then the mayor is a townsperson I have to meet. So then I have to talk to the mayor and he's like, hi, I'm blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, this is weird. And mm. like, you know, like in Stardew Valley, they did the same thing. You've already met people by the time you get the instruction, but they already yeah. show us ticked off. And they already, like, you're like, check, you've already done two out of 30 or however many it yeah. is. Not 30, but. And so there were like little polished stuff like that yeah. that I was like, meh. And so I've played probably like a couple hours of it. I don't know if I'll pick it back up for a while. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I won't pick it up. <laughs> I wouldn't pick it up for now. Yeah. Maybe later. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Are you playing a good one? I'm playing two games right now. Well, the main one I wanted to talk about was Hi-Fi Rush, which I started. Mm -hmm. It was like a secret drop on Game Pass. And is that the music one? It is the music one. It's the music rhythm one. And I thought it was really fun that they dropped it like that. Mm -hmm. Because even as Xbox employees, we didn't know. I didn't know. (laughs) I was like, oh, that's cool. (laughs) No idea. (laughs) So that was kind of fun to experience. I think there's something to be said for, like, surprise drops. Like, mm-hmm. I think those are exciting. I like Like, them. how Beyonce did her, like, album drop. Oh, that was that so was good. Like, yeah. Yeah, oh. And I started playing it. It's really cute. I like the game mechanics. Biggest issue is I don't love the music. And it's a rhythm game. <sighs> yeah. So it's, it's, like, very rock forward. Yeah. And I don't mind rock music. <laughs> you sound like an old lady. <laughs> rock music. <laughs> I'm more of an indie music or even R&B or, I don't know, for some reason, just generic rock has never been my vibe mm-hmm. from a music perspective. And it's it's very much that. Yeah. And the whole game is based around music. So mm. I don't know if I'm going to finish it or not yet, but it has been fun, at least from a gameplay perspective. Yeah. And I've considered muting it and playing it, but then <laughs> it's a rhythm game and you can't really do that. I can't believe you're going to mute a fucking rhythm game. <laughs> you can't really do that. So. Oh, oh. Sad. Just continue my streak of muting games. 
and listening to my own shit. I am um, a little sad that it's rock the whole time, though, because when I watch the trailer, I love rhythm games. They're so fun, and it looked really fun, but I don't really like rock either. I think I want to play Melatonin. You did you that should. little yeah. bite-sized breakdown about it, and I think that might be more up my alley because it's loved a it. little lo-fi sounding, yes. which I love lo-fi. And it's like pastel. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. so cute. Yeah. So I, I might, I might just buy that and play that if mm-hmm. I want to get my my rhythm game fix. But it's been fun, and I like the characters a lot mm-hmm. so far. So I just wish the music was better. And I've even looked up, can you add your own music? Like, you're like, that would how be do I kind mod of a this? fun? Yes. How do I mod this? So that's what I'm playing. The other game that I'm playing is Phasmophobia, which I don't know if I've talked about before. I don't think I have. Is that a scary game? It sounds like it a scary is. game. It is. So Gross. it's what I play with my friends in Portugal, who you're familiar with, mm. uh, to keep in touch. And we play it every couple of weeks. That's so cute. Just to, you know, play a game all together. Me, DK, and um, her and her husband. Sometimes his brother. And it's just a really fun co-op game Mm -hmm. where you are a ghost hunter Hmm. and you're assigned a map and the goal of the game is to figure out what kind of ghost it is by using different instruments in the house and experiencing different spooky things and Hmm. narrowing down so they have something called the spirit box where you go into a room and for the spirit box to work and i'm the designated spirit boxer because i'm the person who gets the least scared (laughs) Even though recently I've been a little bit more scared, actually, after one experience in the game. Interesting. With the spirit box, which I will tell you about. You talk through the spirit box. Yeah. And the ghost will talk back to you. Oh. And you actually talk to it by pressing, like, a button to, like, activate the microphone. Yeah. And the game has a way to understand what you're saying. And it understands certain things that you ask it. So you Mm. can ask, like, how old are you? How did you die? Is Are the AI friendly? pretty good on it? Like, I feel like you'd have to be. It, it recognizes what you're saying, yeah. Huh. Huh. And the ghost will respond back to you, and that's a hint. Like, if the ghost responds... Because there's some types of ghosts that won't talk to you. Interesting. And the the one thing that scared me in the more recent game is after I spirit boxed, I pissed off the ghost, I left the room, and literally the hallway in the game started flashing Aww. lights, Aww. and I saw the ghost from across the hallway come <gasps> at me, oh, I hate that. and it killed oh. me, oh. and Lily was literally standing right next to me, and oh. that nothing happened to her. Oh, she didn't even see anything? Because it was pissed off at me. Oh. Oh, that's so cool, though. Yeah, so it's like a really fun co-op game, and then I died, and I lost all my equipment, which was sad. <laughs> You're like, fuck that ghost. Um, but that's it's really a really fun. fun co-op game, so if you are not opposed to being spooked, oh, it's I... a really fun one. I'll play it with you if you ever want to play oh, it. I will. We'll think about we it. We can give it a shot. I think the only horror game I've ever played was the Man of Medan. Man of Medan. I don't know that one. It's a, I think it's on Game Pass because like 90% of the things I play. It's called like the Dark Anthology, mm. whatever. And it was really fun because uh, Chris and I actually played it together yeah. because you can like swap controllers back and forth. It's oh, cool. like how they do it. And I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. And I would get so nervous when it was my time because you spend the whole time watching him play for like his little scene. And I'd be like, it's my scene next. <laughs> <laughs> and then it would pop up like, "Hey, I'm the controller, and I'm over there." <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the, and that one's like a two player game, so I would definitely recommend that one since you like the horror stuff. Yeah, I really yeah, liked yeah. It. And okay. maybe you'll play it, and you'll be like, "Bridget, that was like pansy ass shit." <laughs> no, I don't know. I honestly, I, it's funny because Lily was like, "Wow, even that spooked you?" Like, because I'd never get spooked. And yeah. Now I'm like, oh, no. That well, just really, for some reason, because it's also first person perspective. Oh, that is scary. It's not third person. It's yeah. first person, mm-hmm. and it's kind of purposefully janky, mm-hmm. and so it takes like a long time to like open the door uh, and like move build that anticipation. and like turn yeah, yeah. and. Ugh. Ugh, I'll consider. It. I mean, uh, I'll play it with you. <laughs> it's really fun. Um, I want you to know that people make fun of me for how scared I get, and literally, like, but you, cr- but you do it. But Chris will. Su- yeah. I know Chris is in the house, and I will be standing here 
and he will come and he will be saying noises like Bridget I'm here and I didn't hear like whatever just spaced out and then he'll come up and tap me on the shoulder and I'll scream then no <laughs> and I've done that more than once at some no. point Chris was he sent me a video and he was like can you explain to me please why you are scared when you know I'm in the home <laughs> You know I'm here. <laughs> so I just need you to know I've like fallen off couches before. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, we'll play it. We'll we can play it with it. Lily. Oh, wait. That could be kind of fun. Yeah. All right. We'll All end right. it there. Yeah. We'll end it there. I think you're closing today. I am. Thank you for listening to our podcast. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe and rate it. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Baddie Breakdowns. Or visit our website and or, you know, do both. Everything. Visit our website, baddiebreakdowns.com, made by Bridget Keen. And the podcast art was done by Tanisha Vernikar and was edited by me, Maddie Wisnat. Join us next time to hear us two baddies break down Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. <laughs> I'm so excited. I've never played it. I know, me neither. We're playing the 2013 version. So if y'all want to get version, on it, if you haven't. Join us. Mm-hmm. It's... $20 on console, $15 on PC, Steam. Yeah. Maybe I'll start playing it today. Yeah. Maybe. Wow. It's late. Mm-hmm. You're to start a game? I go to bed. At- it's only 9.15. <laughs> Goodbye, guys. Okay, bye. <laughs>